Welcome to the demonstration on creating an ETL workflow from scratch using the IRI Workbench for Veracity. IRI flow diagrams are meant to be an all-encompassing job design tool. In one design session, you can integrate, migrate, govern, and analyze data in multiple formats. Flow diagrams allow the user to visually represent the job they are executing. The flow file represents a batch or shell script that can execute multiple SQL jobs, IRI job scripts, database loader files, system commands, and more, all in a specific order to preserve referential integrity. Using the flow diagram palette, items of different types can be added, such as extractors, transforms, utilities, and loaders. The more detailed transform mapping diagram, which represents an IRI job script, can add functions like sort, filter, aggregation, and field rules. For my demonstration, the goal is to acquire information for a report that shows the freight amount being charged to customers in different states, as you can see the output previously created here. I'm running this job on Windows, but it could be executed on any Linux or Unix platform also. Make sure that you have a project folder and database connection set up before starting this job. From the menu, I select New, Flow, to create a flow model. I can change the name and location here. I like the default, so I click Finish. In the Project Explorer, expand the newly created file to the batch component. Right-click, New Representation, and New Flow Diagram. I can change the name of my diagram here also. The diagram is pre-populated with a gray flow let box and a start component. These two components are required for every flow. I drag a transform mapping block from the palette into the flow let. I double click to get the transform mapping diagram open. A transform mapping diagram includes an input, action, and output section. In the action section, I can select sort, join, merge, report, or check. The output is where you usually specify aggregations, protections, and other formatting. I'm using database, so I drag ODBC from the input section of the palette into my input data section. In the dialog screen, I can select my tables. I happen to know that the two tables that I'm using end in underscore flow, so I can use the table selection filter to select those tables for me. And I know that I need to, so there they are. I click Finish. You can see that the action added each table, and I select the input box and arrange selection from the toolbar so I can vet better visually see this. I drag my action to the right side of my input section to move on to the next step. I know this job is a join, so from my palette, I drag a join into the action box. Here I can select my join condition. I select ID and data source 1 and customer ID and data source 2. Click create condition and finish. Let's drag the fields so I can see them better. Now I happen to know for this job I do not need all these fields, so I select the ones using the control button on my keyboard that I do not need, which are ID, name, phone, order ID, and customer ID. Then select delete on my keyboard. Let's arrange selection again so that it makes my screen more compact and move the join condition. You can select Arrange Selection multiple times to get things more compact. I drag the Output Data block to the right side of the Action section. I know that I want to use Standard Out for my output because I want to see the format of my report before I produce a text file. So in the Output section of the palette, I drag Standard Out into the output. Here is where I select my metadata for my output file. Whenever you are using file, standard in, or standard out, you need to make sure that you have your metadata ready ahead of time. In the IRI workbench, these metadata files are called DDFs. I select my output DDF here. Again, I click Arrange Selection to clean things up. Let's click Save. Some of the details of the blocks aren't visualized in the diagram. However, you can see them down below in your Properties view and the Base tab. If I select the white background of the Transform Mapping Diagram, I can see the properties for the Transform as a whole. The IRI job is the name of the script that this Transform block represents. If I right-click in the white background, 
and select IRI Diagram Actions, Export Flow Component, I can create that script. I like the defaults on this screen, so I click Finish. In the Project Explorer, I can see that the script was created. If I double click, I can view it. Here I see two in files, a join, and an out file. I realize in looking at this that I do not want my colleagues to see the field total. So I need to go back to the transform mapping diagram to correct that. I select the total field from the output section, right click, IRI diagram actions, and apply rule. In this screen, I can either browse for an existing rule or create a new one. I decide to click create. Here is a list of the different rules available, separated into different categories. I select the masking function, name it, and leave it in the library location it selected. I click Next. Here I can define the options for my mask, either predefined or custom. I like the predefined whole field, so I'll leave it there and click Finish. Here you can see the details of my rule. I click OK. And if I look at the output field, I can see that the icon has changed and the connector is now orange. This indicates a derived field. Besides masking sensitive data, I'm only interested in the higher freight charges. So I can filter those by going into section options on the palette and adding an include filter in the section options of the diagram. Screen opens up and allows me to define my condition. I click the Expression Builder button, Field Names, Freight, and I know that I want charges greater than 10, and I click Finish and OK. In my output, I can see that there is now an include statement. Since I've made changes to my diagram, let's go ahead and make another script. Let's save, right-click the white background, IRI Diagram Actions, Export Flow Component. However, let's change the script named and add a 2. Finish. In the Project Explorer, I can open up the newly created script, scroll to the bottom, and see that my field is now masked and my include statement is at the bottom. I like the script, so I'll close. Go back to the flow diagram, where I can see that my transform mapping block now has two inputs and an output. At this time, I can add any additional blocks I need from the palette. For instance, I know that this flow file may get relocated, so I want to drag a change directory block from the palette into the flowlet. I mean, I'm going to copy my path into the change directory block, the property screen and directory component. Let's move the transform mapping block so I can see better. Not only can you add items from the palette, but you can also add items from the Project Explorer. For instance, the first job script we made, I can click and drag into my flowlet, and it creates the script in the format of a transform mapping block, including inputs, outputs, and mappings. In order to actually utilize this job flow, I need to connect all of my pieces. So I grab connection from the palette, click on Start for my source and change directory for my target. The connection icon will change to let you know which components can be connected together. Every flowlet must have a start block and all blocks that you want executed must be connected to that start block. As you can see, this one block that I dragged in is not connected and therefore it will not execute with this job. Let's save. I click on the white background and I can see the properties for my whole batch file. If I right click, IRI diagram actions, export flow component, I now see the details for my batch component. I can rename, relocate, and even save in a different platform if I need to run this on a Unix machine. I click finish. When the batch is exported, it creates any scripts that are representing the blocks inside of them. In other words, you do not have to export each transform mapping block separately as the export process for the batch executes those as well. I go into the Project Explorer, right click my batch file, open with text editor so I can see it. Two commands were added representing the two blocks for change directory and the sort CL script. I like this 
and close. This flow diagram can be manipulated over and over again. Test blocks can be left in place in case you need to go back to them for future reference. You can copy and paste blocks from other diagrams. Note that any changes to the diagram will not change the existing scripts or batch files and vice versa. This is a safeguard against unintended changes. The scripts or batch files would need to be exported again after any changes to the diagram. In this example, after I run my script by right-clicking my batch file, run as batch program, it prompts you to save if you have not done so. I can see in my console the four matches to my join and the total column masked. I like what I see and I can go back to my transform mapping diagram and change the output from standard out to a file so that I can share that output with my colleagues. Thank you for watching this video on creating an IRI workflow from scratch. For more information on the IRI Veracity platform, Workbench GUI, or other IRI software products, visit www.iri.com.